Perfect. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to another episode of the Book of Nook show. My name is Kyle Colley and this is a special episode of Creators Talk Podcast, a podcast for book conversations with your favorite bookish content creators. This episode is brought to you by Bookum, the book community's new and best way to host dynamic online book clubs. Download the app and start your book club today at www.bookumapp.com. My guest today is the thoughtful Lauren Erickson. Lauren is an entrepreneur and content creator that helps educate writers on the book industry and emerging trends. She has previously worked as a book launcher for an Inc. 5000 agency. Lauren is also the author of the number one best-selling book on Amazon, um, the Finder, uh, the Finer Things Club. Lauren is an author, educator, a book strategist, a writer, a reader, and a hiker. Lauren, welcome to the Creators Talk podcast. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, it's uh, definitely our pleasure. And speaking of kind of, I want to go back to the the Finer Things Club real quick and talk about like, so you moved out at, at age 20 over mm -hmm. uh, like a thousand plus miles to work at Yellowstone. Can you just kind of share about that experience and how it shaped your life? Oh yeah, no, it was, it was definitely um, a unique experience for sure. I think um, the hardest part was just leaving um <laughs> the uh on only because there was no internet there i mean there was but it was so bad it just might as well have not even existed <laughs> i had no family out there i didn't know anyone out there so this was like you know early 20s like going full on out on your own so it was very intimidating but once i got there you know about a couple weeks in or so i kind of started to find my footing and stuff and once you know you know, I kind of started to get a little more familiar with things. That's just like where everything sort of blossomed. And I think the unique point with that was getting to know more. And, and the story is very coming of age. So a lot of it was getting to know more of myself away from all sort of like influences, you know, that I was familiar with, you know, family, friends, you know, uh, you know, so it, it, it was very much like getting out on my own and getting to learn more about what I wanted and who I was. Um, which, you know, is, are a lot of deep questions that, you know, people are in their early twenties have. And so as a result, it was just crazy authentic living. And I was befriending people that I never thought I would ever talk with outside of Yellowstone. So definitely a, a lot of unique experiences and even cooler people out there for sure. Yeah, definitely. No, I was going to say Yellowstone's a great backdrop to kind of, you know, experience and, and <laughs> <Yeah>. see. <laughs> And, and enjoy life because yeah I, I went out there when I was younger so it's been a while but I just remember going to Yellowstone and be like this this is a national park it's beautiful it's just it's a lot to to take in so I kind of want to hear like how you know that experience and then um like what, what did you learn from you know being in the book publishing and writing your own book like how did like writing your own book help you with um the business of of writing books yeah well so, yeah so <clears throat> when I was in Yellowstone I think what was really cool about that is that it was very much, it sort of cracked me open in a lot of ways. And by the time I left versus coming in, it was like, oh my God, like I can definitely do hard things. If I can bring myself here and have all these amazing, unique experiences, then what's to say that when I leave, I can't do more amazing things outside of the park. So that definitely kind of fueled the motive to want to write a book. And um, that journey was a, a longer one. It was probably a good three-year journey to just write the thing and, and kind of get it out there in the world. And, and during that time, a lot of it was just uh, learning about things about the industry that you just, you know, are, are a little more kind of hidden, I guess. I don't know what the right word would be. Um, so at the same time I was writing my book, I was also working at this, you know, uh, marketing agency working with other authors. So yeah. I was learning about things on my own. And then I was also learning about things on the job and, you know, like combining both of those experiences, I was like, holy cow, this is like the holy grail of information that people just don't know about. So I started documenting things like, you know, in blogs and in YouTube videos and my YouTube videos back then were like not very good, but you know, the content's still there. So um, I was just trying to share everything that I learned on the job and through my professional studies and any type of like industry research that I was doing, because I think um, I was constantly trying to think ahead and when I was writing and crafting my book, you know, I was thinking to myself, you know, as I was going along, like I could write the world's greatest book ever, but if I'm put in front of a really great opportunity, I'm not going to know how to talk to those people, you know, who 
could maybe help with carrying that book across the finish line or something. So as I was kind of writing it and working, I was trying to do some research on the back end too, to know sort of like comprehensively how to approach the book business as a whole to kind of, you know, position myself as best as possible for publication and then, you know, anything beyond at the time. So um, that's, that's kind of what it, what it looked like. And that's over the years, it has fueled the sort of evolution that's come to be author education, um, especially on my YouTube channel. So that's kind of how it all mixed together over the years. Yeah, very nice. And I was talking to his name is Dave Chess, and he's the uh, Kindle entrepreneur. And he was talking about how when you're writing a book, you kind of have to market it almost from day one. It's not even as if you wait till the book launch, you're going to open up your, you know, as you open up the floodgates and no one's going to be there. Right. So talk to me a little bit about how you went about book launching and how you've now learned and discovered book um, launching and how you help authors do the same. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my book launch for, for me, I just cared that the book was made at all <laughs> for me. Yeah. Everything after that was kind of a bonus, you know, it was like a first book kind of thing. And, you know, I'm like, you know, if people buy it and like it, even if that's only 10 people, I'm totally happy. So, um, my book launch was a little more bare bones. It was mostly, um, just kind of getting in touch with those that I was already connected with and kind of reviving some of those older relationships to be like, Hey, I have a book coming out. Um, you know, here's kind of what's going on in my life, what's going on in yours and trying to find ways to collaborate and, you know, kind of get more of like a reciprocal conversation going for ways they can support me and ways I can support them. So it was a combination of that. And also just a lot of outward marketing, oh, yeah. um, you know, a lot of family and friends bought it and stuff too. Um, but what was really cool, uh, within the past month or so is, um, I was at the library and, um, I have, I have library experience. And so I was working at the library at the time. <laughs> And this guy like came up to the desk I was working at. He was like, hey, is there like a Lauren who works here? And I was like, I don't know. Kind of depends on who's asking, I guess. <laughs> and I was really scared. And he was like, oh, hey, my wife read your book. And then I read it and it was so great. And it was probably one of my favorite author moments. And, you know, we spent like a good 10 minutes just talking about, you know, the book and Yellowstone. And then I learned that his son worked in Yellowstone, but he didn't talk about it much. So the book was enlightening for him in that way. And so it's just like that, that was like the moment that just kind of validated like how impactful and powerful a book can be, even if it only reaches, you know, 70 or 100 people or something like that. Um, so, uh, you know, but now what, what I talk about with, um, you know, writers and authorpreneurs and stuff now is that, like you said, when you were talking with Dave, is that you, you almost want to start promoting you know, way further ahead than you think you should. Like, you don't necessarily need a, in my opinion, you don't really need a book to start promoting in the first place, you could kind of start softly building a brand about, you know, what is the kind of stuff you like to talk about? You know, who are the kind of people that you want to access? If you decide to write a book later, then you kind of already have a budding community that's kind of growing, you know, versus writing, publishing and promoting a book and then kind of being reactive towards the end where now you have a book to promote and you have to, you know, build a platform or build an audience, depending on, you know, if you're starting from, you know, ground zero or if you're kind of a beginner um, so yeah, I, I totally agree with that, that, you know, the, it, I, I think the promotion part kind of sneaks up on people, especially with book launches where they tend to be a little bit reactive and, and on the stuff that I talk about on YouTube or blogs or whatever, I try to kind of catch people as early on as I can to be like, Hey, just while I have you here, here's all the stuff that you should probably be thinking about, you know, not to add more to your plate, but there's, there's always something to think about when it comes to marketing for sure. I think it comes from that idea of being kind of scared that someone's going to take your idea, but what you kind of realize, especially as you build and as entrepreneurs, it really takes a lot for someone to take your idea. They might even be like, oh, I could do this. But when it comes to writing it and promoting it and pushing it out, it is, it, and not to mention you are, you know, you're the soul of it too. So they would also the take parts of your brain to really understand how <laughs> good that can happen. So I think when you look back on it, it, it comes from a very, obviously, um, naive. I mean, I, I wouldn't say naive, but um, a clear, you know, s specific spot. Like, yeah, I don't want anybody taking it, but it is extremely hard to do that. But um, speaking of that, we we're talking a little bit about marketing. Um, like, how do you, how do author how how do you say authors should use uh, social media to get their book out in the world? How do you talk to them about that? That's a really great question. And I feel like people feel a lot of pressure to utilize social media. And it's it's almost kind of hard not to. I feel like you're you're mm -hmm. in such a digital age that it's almost a little bit hard to avoid it. But, you know, I, I know people have different feelings about, um, you know, uh, social media, but there, there's all kinds of cool ways that you can do it.
Um, yeah. You know, I, I would say that it doesn't really hurt to kind of experiment or play around with your digital footprint a little bit, you know, as early on as you can, just to kind of get a feel for, you know, how do you like to communicate what you like to talk about? You know, what platforms do you kind of resonate with? Are you like a text person where you like newsletters and blogs? Are you a, you know, visual person where you like, you know, videos or whatever, or live streams? Um, kind of playing around with that. Um, and then also, I think what's also really important is um, identifying where your audience hangs out. Because if you know who your ideal audience is, and you kind of know where they're getting their information or, you know, getting their entertainment, it's going to be a little bit easier to kind of position yourself that way or in front of those, you know, large clusters of people or concentrated clusters of people where you can kind of get their attention and be like, hey, if you're into this kind of thing, I happen to write a book about it, go get your copy on Amazon or, or go check out my, um, you know, my website or something. But um, there's all kinds of cool ways you can, you, you know, you can do live streams, you can collaborate with people. I think um, depending on what your book is about, I think social media is a really great tool to start conversations with a lot of different types of people in a variety of different places. You know, you're not just bound to location. Um, but I, you know, I, I don't really think that there's necessarily a wrong way to do social media. I think it's just knowing where your audience is and the kind of content or unique, authentic content that they're hungry for and knowing kind of how to best present it to them. Um, and I think that's kind of your unique point is that no one can say it in the way that you can, because there's only one you and there's only ever going to be one you. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's kind of like what you were mentioning earlier, you know, it's pretty hard for someone to steal your idea in the way that you have it, if they're not you. It's like there's, you know, 10,000 different versions of Cinderella and each exactly. person kind of tells it in their own way and each person has a preference, you know, so I guess it's kind of how I think about it personally. Do you feel like authors have to be forward facing in this modern era because of social media or do you think that they can still stay behind the scenes and get their book out the way it needs to be pushed? You know, I, I think anything can happen if you're willing to think creatively about it. I've worked with people who you know, weren't too whippy about the idea of utilizing social media. Um, and I, I personally think that, you know, if, if you don't love Instagram or TikTok or whatever, then it's going to show, you know, if you're, if you're posting or interacting on your app, you're, I don't know, you, you might have negative feelings about it and it'll kind of come across one way or another in your content. Um, but, you know, I think there's lots of other cool ways to do it too. Platform doesn't just have to be social. It could be interacting with your community and collaborating with bookstores, um, I know in the Chicago area, which is where I'm from, you know, there's like all kinds of book festivals and stuff and, you know, places where you can network and meet with other writers and kind of help cross promote that way. There's festivals, there's um, libraries are an amazing resource and they love putting on programs. So, you know, if you want to extract a nugget of wisdom or two from your book, if it's nonfiction or maybe how you crafted a thriller novel that you wrote or something, you can always like turn that into like a digestible kind of workshop or like webinar or presentation or something in person, if that's something that you're comfortable with too. But I think if you're not too keen on social media, just, you know, uh, utilizing your local resources and collaborating with other local, you know, writers and authors and even writers groups are such powerful ways to get a really tight knit community kind of, you know, uh, collaborating and, and supporting one another. So there's definitely more than one way to make two numbers add up to 10. That makes sense. Talk to me a little bit about author education, like where, where that came from for you. And then just, I guess, best practices for, let's say, just specifically uh, self-published authors um, when it comes to having the business side of um, um, book marketing or book publishing. Yeah, I I always uh, think of it as like there's always an inevitable pivot that I think kind of catches writers off guard from the craft of writing to the business of books. And I think that kind of you know, pivots around the publication stage where you spend X number of months or maybe even years writing and editing your book, you get it published, you get the almighty book deal, or if you decide to self-publish or something, then it's like, okay, great, this book is out in the world, you know, now, oh, oh gosh, I'm gonna have to like market this. I don't know how to do that. I'm gonna have to like, do I need to go on social media? Do I have to do all this stuff? And so what I try to do is I, I call it author education, like you mentioned, and it's just catching people as early on as I can to talk to them about all the little different areas of the book business that they might not know about so that they can not only kind of arm themselves with some of that industry knowledge, especially if they're wanting to go the traditional route and work with a press. Um, but it, you know, it can also kind of help them vet different opportunities that they get, or, you know, a lot of 
you know, writers unfortunately get scammed by, you know, vanity presses or, you know, people promising to make them, I don't know, Wall Street Journal bestsellers or something. But, you know, hey, if you pay $100,000 for it, you know, we can do that for you. So, you know, avoiding some of those pitfalls, addressing misconceptions, talking about how to like best position yourself um, as an author within the landscape, even if you do self-publish, I try to position myself that way to kind of, you know, explain as best I can and as succinctly as I can sort of what pieces or, you know, how how industry insiders sort of view authors um, as well as, you know, sort of how to best set themselves up for success for their next best opportunity, whatever that looks like. So I guess in a nutshell, that's kind of what it is. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I, I want to shift a little bit into you as a content creator, like what kind of got you into doing content? And so far, like, what do you consider what you want to talk about? Because there's so many things that come come along in the book space and author space. Like, what do you when do you decide, all right, this is something I need to talk about and make a video around? Yeah, well, yeah. So, um, like I said earlier in the beginning, when I was on my own um, authorship journey and and working for this book marketing agency, there was a lot that I was learning. And at the time I was like, you know, best way to document this is probably on a blog because it's all written down and, you know, everything's kind of there on paper, um, you know, helps with SEO and all that. So I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just seeing sort of what stuck and what didn't. I think I was more documenting it for myself, just more publicly, but um, so I started initially writing blogs about it and I was attempting to do YouTube and then I, I sort of fell off the track a little bit because I, I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't really have a plan. I wasn't like attempting to build anything, um, but it, it, it ended up kind of coming back around sort of full circle. And so, um, you know, in uh, over the past year or so, especially from about last year until now, I've, I've kind of gotten a little more heavy into making content on YouTube, especially because um, for me, that's just where I feel like I've gotten the most engagement and the fastest kind of reaction with the stuff that I talk about. And the other thing that I noticed too, is I, I haven't really come across any other channels out there that talk about the business of books. There's all kinds of amazing resources on there about, you know, how to self-publish or, you know, best ways to market a book or, you know, how to get a book deal, how to write a query letter. Um, but I kind of wish that it was just a little deeper and it didn't just touch on sort of the deliverables or like the symptoms of publication, you know, I'm not really mm. sure if that's the right way to put it. So I started trying to position myself as someone who tries to explain why things are the way that they are and what to do about it once you know it. So I've started kind of creating content around that a lot more heavily in the past year or so. And honestly, half the time, I feel like it's just a bunch of shower thoughts that I end up making videos about. Um, sometimes it's research. I would say the other half is, you know, coming across blog articles, coming across, you know, any um, news, uh, you know, news stories or trends. So I feel like half of it is just random bubble thoughts and the other half is just what's coming in on my newsletters, honestly. No, that's what I appreciate about your content because, again, publishing can be so complex and there's so many moving pieces that mm -hmm. a 30 minute video or 20 minute video that's broken down and, and it's easy to see especially from a content creator like yourself makes the content in the space a less I guess less frightening for maybe authors or publishers or even readers there they can at least say okay this is why things are happening so I do appreciate your content so how do you think about that in the forms of community and building audience how do you think about engaging your community in that sense Honestly, I feel like I try to give people honest answers without, you know, uh, what is the word? Um, like, uh, without smashing their dreams or anything. I, I want to be realistic without just like, you know, dissolving whatever dreams or whatever that they had, what that they had in mind. Um, so whatever I do, I try to make it honest. I try to make it as straightforward as I can. I try to deliver it as, you know, uh, personably as I can, like, I want to show up as myself. I don't want to pretend like I'm some type of tight knit buttoned up corporate person or something. I want it to be like conversational and stuff. So I really value the transparency, the honesty, the authenticity, and especially the connection that comes with that. Because when you're talking about stuff like this, it's, it's going to invite in a lot of different questions and a lot of different opinions. Um, and so, you know, I feel like over the past few months, especially, I've been getting a lot more engagement on my channel because I try to have a lot of these individual conversations with people. If someone leaves a comment, I really, really try my best to address that person individually and kind of have like a mini conversation going in the comments or, you know, asking them questions or 
I even had one guy who reached out to me um, over email with a question, which I, I am more than welcome. Um, so I, I think kind of getting, you know, some of those, uh, that individual rapport going is a really great way to um, kind of help further the message a little bit, build engagement um, and keep, you know, honest conversations going that might challenge some people's beliefs, but, you know, also invite in a lot of different perspectives. I, I never want it to come across like, I am the source of truth or anything. I'm always open to criticism or other people's opinions. And I honestly just try to create a space that addresses those sides. But if more people have thoughts that they want to share, then they're, you know, you know, more than welcome to, you know, share their thoughts if they didn't feel like they were represented. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And I, I remember watching one of your videos, you talked a little bit about like creating boundaries and like setting boundaries around books. And yeah. I also think there's a level of creating boundaries as a creator, you know, because <laughs> as, as you become more forward faced and people think they understand you more and they think they can, you know, say whatever to you. So I'm curious how you <laughs> kind of set those boundaries between like obviously being a creator and then also when it comes to setting boundaries about uh, around books and all that. Yeah, so I feel like... um most recently i've i've been um trying my best to allow space for criticism which which has been a little bit hard like there's definitely a lot of experts who've been a part of the industry way longer than i have so that's probably been the hardest part is just being okay with some of those criticisms coming in and not taking it quite so personally so i guess that's more of like in like a like an inner or like an interior boundary that i have with myself of like they're not attacking my character they're just maybe going after what i said in that particular context which you know maybe was misleading in some kind of way so at least with myself i try to allow some of that space and flexibility with my own mindset to be to to be told that i'm wrong about something um and then, uh, you know, um, if, if, you know, people are attacking me and my character or something, I just, I just don't engage it with it. I, I, I really don't get too many of those, but every once in a while, someone will try to be, you know, all huffy about something. And I'm just like, well, that's okay. You know, maybe you're not the intended audience and that's okay. <laughs> yeah. It kind of, yeah. It goes back to it. Like you're only, you can only please so many people And it. Again, you got to, as a content creator, you got to make the content you want to make. Yeah. because it comes through more authentic that way like people really appreciate it when they said okay lauren made this type of content versus if you're exactly. just doing it for clicks or because someone told you to do it this way the next time so i think that all plays into being a content creator for sure yeah oh yeah i i definitely you know don't want to act like i am the right one you know my yeah. word is is the one and only one but yeah yeah for for sure <laughs> how do you so how do you blend your writing with your uh content in the sense of when you're about to go make a video, are you scripting it all out? Or how do you balance the, you know, your skills in those different ways? So what I used to do, um, you know, not so long ago when I was trying to figure out what I what I'm doing, um, I used to write blogs first about whatever it was that I was, you know, curious to talk more about or whatever. I would write the blog, and then at the time I would use the blog as like a really loose script for the video. And then, you know, once the video was made, I could just pop it into the blog, you know, and it'd be kind of, you know, similar in structure and format. Um, I think that <laughs> there were a little too many words on the page for me to always keep my thoughts organized, as you can probably imagine. So um, usually what I'll do is uh, I'll, of course, create some kind of loose script. And um, if there's any specific articles or like news stories that I use, I always try to link those in. If there's any you know, particular excerpts that I feel like are especially important to call out or to highlight to either start a new point or to validate one that I'm making. I definitely like explicitly pull those out and, and include them in my script. Um, and then once I have a video kind of based around that, I'll also kind of create a loose blog, you know, using the stuff that I already have and keep linking those two together. But it's, I, I'm still trying to figure out my structure if I'm being totally honest, but there's, there's always almost some kind of loose script that's happening. It's never pretty, but it, it works for me in the way that my brain works. Well, yeah, that's the cool thing about being a creator or an artist. Like you're always improving the craft. You're always learning something new a little bit. You see someone else do something that's unique and it doesn't even have to be in the book space. It can be somewhere completely different, but right. it sparks an idea or a video concept mm -hmm. and, and you get better over time. It's the same thing with writing. Um, so yeah. like, yeah, when it comes to your, like when it comes to writing, how do you, how, what's your like writing process generally, if you're going to write a book or if you're going to write um, a blog, I know it's going to be slightly different, but how do you think about when it comes to writing in that sense? I think with blogs, especially, um, I, I will, I'll usually like, I have like, I'll have like 10,000 thoughts in my brain all at once. 
And I almost try to, you know, filter through which ones are the most important or the ones that need to be said the most in order to make a particular point or to, you know, establish a particular sort of perspective or approach. So I'll basically, you know, loosely throw stuff on paper that I'm like, this has to be there, this has to be there, this has to be there, just almost kind of like a brain dump. And then from there, I'll kind of filter through it and organize it and, you know, pull articles and excerpts and things, um, you know, that kind of support those things. Because I don't want it to be all about just you know, me and my own opinions, like those are great every once in a while. But, you know, I also want to bring in other industry experts or, you know, consumers or people who used to work in publishing or something like that. So there's a more of a comprehensive kind of scope. So usually it starts bare bones and then I'll kind of, you know, fill it in with layers of different, you know, resources and things. Um, With books, I've only written one and that was a whole journey. But basically I used a lot of uh, journal entries to inform the stories in that one because there was no internet in Yellowstone. So I was constantly journaling. And uh, I think I I wrote, you know, I don't know, at least a few days a week. So thankfully, you know, for specific moments in the book, I was able to reflect back or, you know, pull out some of those journals and see specifically what I said about a particular moment in time. And that was really, really helpful for not just the structure, but also like micro, you know, ha- you know, particular experiences, you know, or smells or, you know, scenery or something. Yeah. Like I was saying, on you're literally on site, so you get to see a little bit of everything. You get to bring it into the world. That's really cool. Um, let's let's shift a little bit into you as a reader. Um, what's like the last book you read, the book you're reading now, and what do you read next? Oh my gosh. One of the most recent books that I read, um, it's got a really cool title. Uh, and I think it came out, I don't know, a few months ago, definitely within the past year. And it's called, um, I survived capitalism and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. <laughs> oh, okay. I've seen the book. Yeah. Have you read that one? No, I haven't. I've seen it before. Yeah. 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 But yeah. So, you know, it's a memoir. I'm a big memoir person, any kind of nonfiction book. Um, but that one was really cool. It's uh, just a very realistic perspective on, um, you know, just the way life kind of is right now and how different, you know, pieces kind of play into our current landscape, especially economically. It was a very big focus on that and, you know, how a very particular person in a particular set of circumstances addressed a particular type of challenge or obstacle. Um, so I'm, I always love reading about that kind of stuff. You know, I always try to take some of those little nuggets and add them to my own back pocket or to my own survival guide. Um, so I read that. And then what, what was the other question? Yeah. Like, well, what are you reading now? And then, uh, what do you, what are you going to read next? Any, any book you're looking forward to reading to? What am I reading next? Um, oh gosh, I need to pull up my Goodreads list or something. I think the next it's, it's honestly probably a business book. I have like three different books on my nightstand right now. And I all, I got them all on the same day and I'm trying to remember which one I'm prioritizing at the moment, but they're all, they're all pretty nonfiction heavy for sure. Usually I'll read about business or I'll read about, you know, books about books, or I'll read about Mm. memoirs or biographies, just if it's got an answer or a story or ideally both at the same time, I'm all for it. (laughs) Yeah, that's good. Um, What (laughs) makes, I said, what makes for a great story? Like, even if, uh, you know, you're helping people with their books, like when you're like, all right, this is, this is a great story in your opinion. Honestly, I think it's just accessing the person that you're wanting to target exactly where they are, because all of my books that are on my back wall, um, you know, I've, I've got, I don't know, like oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, books up there or something. But I, I, what I liked about those books is I almost felt like a piece of myself was represented in another person's story. And I feel like that connection has got to be the most powerful part of any book, whether it's fiction, whether it's, you know, nonfiction. Um, it could be, you know you relate to a particular set of circumstances that someone was in, or you relate to a particular type of, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, process for how someone addressed a particular set of circumstances or something like, you know, it it could be a habit, it could be a quirk. But for me, I feel the most connected with the book if I feel like I can deeply relate to that person, whether if it's them individually, or, you know, their challenges or their circumstances. Um, And I think being able to know what that particular challenge is and, you know, sort of how to best communicate it to that kind of person is a pretty great combination for him, which is a very subjective thing to say. You know, every people are are at different points and, you know, and different kinds of lives and stuff. But um, I think those two things are probably the most powerful elements of just knowing who you're targeting and knowing the best way to kind of tell a story to them. Yep, that's good. Uh, let's get into a little bit of rapid fire. It's just three quick questions. Sure. Um, best book you're um, best book you read in 2024 so far? 
I think it was probably the capitalism one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because it's very honest. I really liked her her honesty. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And then uh, a nonfiction book you su you suggest? Nonfiction book that I suggest. I really liked. Oh shoot! I should look at my wall. Um. You know what? I really liked uh, Educated. I I know that okay. that's one of the more popular ones, but just her her particular set of circumstances are just so unique that I can't help but be really curious to know how she addressed them. So I thought that one was really, really good. Very good. And then last one, a, fix, a fiction book you'd suggest. Ooh, A Gentleman in Moscow by okay. um, Amor Tolls. His writing is just immaculate in that one. I just, it, it's just so delicious, his language. <laughs> And then the way I like to wrap up this uh, interview, I mean, this creators talk, the, you can say it however you want. You can change up the question. It's a two-sided question. Um, what aspect would you like to see more of in the book world? I would really like to see more conversations happening um, between publishers and underrepresented writers, for sure. Okay. Um which I know is kind of a tall order, but um, I think there tends to be a bit of a disconnect. And I think it's important that writers do see books as a business, but I also also think that it's really important that, you know, publishers and presses and industry professionals recognize that, you know, there are a lot of people out there with really amazing stories who just don't happen to have large platforms or, you know, don't happen to have as many industry connections as maybe, you know, some of these franchise authors that we see. But I think, um, you know, uh, you know, with the the way that people inform trends and the types of books that your average person is recommending, I think that kind of helps influence some of those conversations and to kind of bridge the gap a little bit. Like book book talk is probably a really great example of of people telling publishers what they like. Yeah, that's fair. And on the other side, what would you like to see less of in the book world? What I would like to see less of in the book world. Um, that's a really great question. <laughs> I feel like I would probably like to see less confusion around marketing, which again is, a, is also a tall order. But if, if I'm able to help with that, then I'm going to feel really good about myself and, and the work that I do at the end of the day. So if I can help address some of those misconceptions around what needs to happen to, you know, make a successful book, you know, defined by the author, and I can kind of help them on that journey, then I'll, I'll feel really good about what I do. Yeah, that's well said. Um, Lauren, thank you again for being on the podcast. Um, let us know where we can find you or anything that's coming up in your world that uh, we can support. Yeah. So my website is Lauren Erickson official.com. Um, I'm on Instagram. My name's Lauren Erickson, but the O in my last name is a zero. And then YouTube, my username is the same one. <laughs> so those are the three places where I hang out the most. Yeah. Perfect. Um, I'll make sure to add it to the um, show notes, but thank you again, Lauren. It's been a pleasure. Uh, oh, thank cool. you again. Yeah, of course. Thank you. I, yeah. Thanks for having me. It's been a great conversation. I appreciate yeah, absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yep. Take care. <laughs> Have a good All right, one. Thank you. You too.